What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Try Same Podcast. I'm Matt, and you join me for one of probably one of my more famous types of video. In fact, um, yep, the, it's not just the kit boy over here. And I guess today, well, let's be honest. What's the theme of the moment in rugby league? Disciplinary. The big D word that has taken over from defence. And I guess there's two angles to this. There's the whole head high contact point, which. I think we're all sick to the back teeth of debating and I'm going to, whilst I'm going to reference it, I'm not going to focus too much on that here. And then there's part two, the match review panel. This is where I'm going to focus a bit more and actually determine, is this relevant and fit for purpose? Now, as I'm recording this, it is... Tuesday night, we have just seen the bans for this coming weekend of fixtures as you're watching on the Saturday, or as least this is uploaded. So the bans that have happened and appeals listened to today will come into effect from this round of games that you are either about to or have just watched. And, you know, without further ado, let's just crack straight in, I guess. And I think the first one I wanted to pull out here was, I guess the appeal has gone on with Sam Sutton at late. Now, this is definitely one that has somewhat irked me, I think is the right word here. Because I just don't, I just don't see how this is a fair cop, a three match suspension for this. I think when we all watched the Leeds KI game on Sky, we very much thought that James Donaldson's tackle was the worst of the two, and that was the one you looked at and thought, OK, penalty note is coming here. He obviously got a two-match suspension, which is fine in itself. Good behaviour, again, fine. But you looked at the owners and kind of thought this was arguably a harsh yellow, probably less so under these new rules, but certainly didn't warrant a grade D, which I guess for reference is the same as what Franklin Pele's swinging arm slash punch slash whatever in the whole derby was. And I look at those two challenges, I don't really see a comparison here. And I don't know, something to me at least doesn't really stack up in all this it kind of feels a bit like it's a case of whack a random grade and suspension on like it's drawn out of a hat and it really just feels like the match review panel right now is not actually reviewing the match i mean i guess in terms of good things they've done new brown was not suspended for what, let's face it, the entirety of rugby league to consider to be one of the most farcical red cards ever given. It's probably the equivalent to when, what, I can't remember which referee it was now in the Premiership, did a little case of mistaken identity between Kieran Gibbs and Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain and sent the wrong man off. That's the level of refereeing incompetence we've got to give that a red. And I guess for the record here, I don't actually blame the man in the middle. He's given a set of guidelines and frameworks that he's got to act within. And that's exactly what he was doing. If you remember a few years back, in fact, in terms of play of the balls, if your ball then hit an opposition player who was still in the rook, it was a penalty. That was the way that the referee's guidelines were written. And it took, I believe, Michael Shenton of Castleford at the time to deliberately throw the ball into an opposition player behind the rook, live on Sky Sports for the RFL to finally take notice and say, actually, being this strict and to the letter on it is not working. And it's given a blatant cheating advantage almost. And whilst I don't think we're necessarily saying there's a cheating advantage per se from these high tackle rules, albeit it does arguably 
encourage forwards to lead with their head, which is counterintuitive to all the concussion protocols that have been brought in. But anyway, it's interesting how the two things don't necessarily interact the way that you'd expect. I guess the other one I wanted to just draw to was last week's issue. And this is, of course, the Harry Smith ban. Now, we talked about this briefly in our World Club Challenge preview when we were almost certain that a ban would be coming. And obviously, it never happened. And then there's a whole other part here of what has gone on. Because I don't have a problem with them taking a lenient approach on players, particularly those who aren't repeat offenders. But to blame an attacking player, the player who in this case was fouled, for putting himself in a dangerous position, therefore you won't suspend the other guy because of a split-second body adjustment, is... I don't know. It seems dodgy. And again, I don't kind of want to say this... Zayt Smith should have been punished. For the record, I think it was a ban. But I think it just highlights what we're dealing with here. We've gotten a video review that said red card to an on-field decision to overturn that, despite not having the angles and only give a yellow, to a match review panel who decided there was no charge to answer. What have they actually reviewed is the question again. And my honest answer on this makes me think they wanted to give him a one-match ban. But because that would have meant doing the World Club Challenge rather than a Super League game, and it's, you know, obviously Wigan's biggest game of the season, there's an encourage for Super League to do well against the NRL clubs, they decided to go for the fine option and negate the ban. Because ultimately no English club would be detrimentally impacted by that. And that is... You know, obviously a personal belief of why they did what they did. But to me, again, this isn't right. This isn't fair across the board if that is even remotely being considered. What is the simple answer there? Well, for me, it's obvious. League bans, cup bans, two separate entities. Your league bans apply to, funnily enough, league games only. In which case, in this hypothetical scenario, Smith's one-game ban would have come into round three of the Super League season. A cup ban, obviously, reverts to cup. Typically, going to be a challenge cup, isn't it, for the Super League teams? But, you know, that's the easiest way around dealing with that problem. And then you don't end up with this situation of players being banned for separate competitions. It works well in other sports. I think that could be the answer here. But I guess I'm going to kind of hand this over to you guys. And there is definitely more instance I could have pulled up. I've not even touched on the Liam Watts one, for example. But let me know what you think. How are you finding the match review panel at the moment? Does it seem like it's doing its job? Or is there arguably more questionable decisions than ever? Let me know your thoughts. And yeah. Join me next time for another internal slash discussion video where hopefully between us all as a community we try and put the game to rights. If you're new around here, please hit the red button and subscribe. Turn the notification bell on. It'd be really appreciated by us too. Main pod will be out again on Wednesday, which I can't remember what we're discussing on the next one, so that'll be a surprise for me too. And yeah, see you next time. Goodbye.